and welcome back to Quilts and Beauty and Books, my corner of YouTube. I pray that you and your family are all doing well today and that you enjoy today's video. I cannot believe that we are wrapping up the month of December. <laughs> it feels like I just started, you know? This is too surreal. First, before I get started in the video, I want to thank each and every one of you for making my 2009, 2019, I'm sorry, goals for my YouTube video. I hit over 100 subscribers, 100 family members. I thank each and every one of you. I am beyond thrilled i'm beyond blessed that you take your time out of your busy day to listen to what i have to say and what i have to share i do appreciate each and every one of you oh and another thing another thing i want to throw out there because 2000 no we out of yeah 2020 i can't say 2010 2019 no honey we are in 2020 in a couple more days okay also i want to share with you guys for the month of january i'll be doing it for mm, probably six to eight weeks i will be doing um i guess i want to call it a bible study but it's how to study your bible and it is by k arthur david arthur and pete de Lacey. And I believe this is the induction study. Um, and I also have the workbook. I will be doing this along with you guys. I'll be sharing my journey with this book here out on YouTube. And I think, um, I can't guarantee I'm going to pick up every single thing that this study does because I don't know yet. But um, I've seen it out on YouTube and I'm like, I was really, really interested on how they use that technique or that method of study. So I'm going to give it, um, I'm going to give it a shot myself, okay? <laughs> I'm getting tongue tied. Yeah, so I have to read, according to the workbook, go through chapters one through four. So that's what I'll be concentrating on for um, January 1. I think I'm going to do it like the first week. Have it done. I'm looking at my calendar now. Yes. January 1 falls on a Wednesday. And um, through chapter 4, just in case if you have this book and you want to go through it with me or if you want to get this book and go through it with me. So we're going we're talking about pages 1 through 66 the first week. I will do it and we will we'll, and I'll be coming back and sharing with you. I will only be talking to you guys about this book on Saturdays. So that will be that. Again, it is the how to study your Bible and this is using the induction study method. So Let's get into the wrap up. Oh my gracious, guys. I got my handy dandy calendar here. I got a new one. I gotta find it. <laughs> I have to find it because yes, this we're closing out 2019, y'all. In the book department, I didn't get much done. However, that was only because my quilts, I had those seven quilts that took Presidents that took precedence over any fiction books that I read. Now, one thing I did keep constant was my um, devotion and scripture writing. Again, I used the book Devotions for Christmas. I will be getting this if they have a new one for um, 2020 Christmas season. If you know the Lord wills, I'm still here. I'll be getting another one of these books. I thought they were pretty cool. I like it. I also did my scripture writing. Here is my December layout. I finally got it done. My colors were in red and green for Christmas with no washi in between them. I probably, I still have a couple of days before the end of the month if I decide to go ahead and put washi tape in between them. But as of now, I didn't do it. Also, um... 
Yeah, I'm going to show you the books that I did not get to <laughs> before touching on the books that I did get to. And then that, that'll be it for this wrap up. I'm told you, told you guys, I'm trying to keep it, keep these videos short and sweet for a couple of reasons. One of the biggest reasons is because y'all I live out in the country, which we have crappy Wi-Fi. So the shorter the video I make without going way, 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 way too fast, <laughs> the faster and the easier it is to upload. Now, if I'm uploading videos that's like between 30 to 45 minutes or over, it's going to take over a day. I don't got that kind of time to play around with trying to upload a video. So the quicker I can make them, the better upload time and everything. So let me start rambling and get to the books that I did not, not get a chance to read. And the first one is the the Christmas ha A Christmas Haven, and this was an Amish Christmas romance, and it's by Cindy Waltzmall. I did not get a chance to read this one. Jacob's Bell, A Christmas Story by John Schneider. Um, Catching Christmas by Terry Blackstock. The Paper Bag Christmas by Kevin Allen Milne. And the one I wanted to read so, so bad. I was trying to squeeze these last these last two books in by the end of the month. Not going to happen. I don't want to stress myself out. This one is The Redemption of Scrooge. And it's by Matt Rawl. And the last one is The Gift of Christmas Path, a Southern Romance, and it's by Cindy Woodsmall and Aaron Woodsmall. Now, I know I said I would push these books over into January if I didn't get a chance to read them. I'm not going to say I'm going to push all of them over because I do know I have a buddy read coming up with Nay. And if you guys want to do a buddy read with me, let me know. Or if you want to join in on our buddy reads, just let me or Nay know. We will definitely love to include you guys in our um, buddy reads. Um, I don't know. I might just like do one a month until I read them all or once. I'm hoping that they'll all be read before the end of 2020 <laughs> so I can get a new batch of Christmas books. But yeah, no, mm -mm. those did not get read. And uh, I'm going to tell you exactly why. Because I, I, I said it several times in the last couple of videos. Those quilts took precedence over everything fiction reading. And when my machine went down... Or was acting up and I still haven't, you know, got her back to him. I'm sorry, back to 100%. I had to put the reading to the side. You know, I couldn't. I mean, I was up from the time I woke up until late at night trying to get those quilts done. I finally got all of them done. You talking about somebody who was like, hallelujah. I was so excited. But I... I have to figure out another strategy, guys. I think I have to do them earlier in the year. And that way I won't be so pressed for these last couple of months to get them completed. Because I had a schedule. And yeah, that schedule was, went all the haywire when my machine went kaput. And, and then my body was acted up because of my machine was, you know, acting up. So yeah, it was a whole lot of, whole lot of. And it didn't need to be that way. <laughs> so, on to the four books I did get to complete. And what I'm going to do, I don't even know if I can do. Um, bring up what I wrote. I'm looking at my phone, I'm sorry. I'm trying to... Um... Oh, there it is. Bring up because I did like a little bit of you know taste of a review on these books after I finished finish reading them. One book I'm still reading, so I didn't do one the right one on that one. But yeah. All 
Okay. Because, honey, I'm going to tell you, some of these books, I, I don't forgot all about them already. <laughs> this month was a blur. The first book I'm going to talk to you guys about is Christmas and Winter Hill. This is the book I am still reading, and it is by Melody Carlson. I'm halfway through the book. So far, it's pretty good. It's about a lady who and her daughter who moved to a town called Winter Hill, but they're in the midst of celebrating Christmas. She is a city manager, and... She is trying to wonder, she is wondering why Christmasville, this Chris, it's called, it's a Christmas festival, is taking up so many, you know, taking up everybody's time, taking up everybody, um, their job, over their jobs and everything, because the whole town is Christmas themed. I mean, the restaurants got a Christmas name, the seamstress building got a Christmas name. All these places of business have, like one of the reindeer, you know, Rudolph, Blitz, and, and all them, whatever their names are. <laughs> all of them have a name. Common is one of them. Has a name a bit in a business some kind of way. And she's like, wait a minute. Now, why is Christmas so important to all these people? Now, mind you, in her life, her birthday is on Christmas Eve. And she was in and out of foster care and never had um, any kind of stable, meaningful relationship, never had um, a stable, uh, meaningful family or anything like that. Everything that to do around Christmas sucked for her. So she is trying to come out of it. So I'm kind of curious to see how it's going to end for her. The next book, I think this was the first book that I read for the month. But don't give me the line because, honey, like I said, December was a blur. <laughs> and it's a dog named Christmas, and it's a novel by Gray Kincaid. I thought this book was really, really cute. I am looking for my, um, my post on it. Here it is. And this is what I wrote because I refuse to try to remember it off the top of my head because it, it's gone, y'all. It's gone. I said, how cool is it to foster a dog for for the holidays? George and Mary Ann could not say no to their son, Todd, who yet lives at home on their farm due to him being developmentally challenged. It was only to be until December 26th that, the foster, that they fostered a dog from the local shelter for their Adopt a Dog for Christmas program. After much debate, Todd and Dad was bringing home a big black dog that Todd named Christmas. Okay, before I continue with my review, when it said the big black dog, if you don't know anything about animal shelters or um, the, the animal community, especially when it comes to dogs, black dogs in the shelter, big or small, are usually... This is real life now, guys. Are usually not adopted. Now, I know you're like, what? Why? Because they're black. Not, it's, it's like a taboo. Like there's, you know, dog, black dogs are mean. Black dogs are bad. That kind of thing. They're just not adoptable. And it is so really sad. And, and they got an, another one for small dogs. Too. And it is really crazy how people think that, no, that's not going to be a good dog. That dog is black. No, 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 no. I'm like, come on, y'all. It's a dog. <laughs> but to each his own. Each his own. Now, I've adopted several dogs. And I have to say that none of them were black. And it was because that is not what I was what I saw, you know, I went for cuteness. And in fact, I don't recall seeing any black dogs, especially now Tyler, um, adopted a dog named Tyler. He was a little, um, Shih Tzu or Lotso Opso dog. Hmm. See, that dog was an old honorary something. He was like a grayish black. That's as closest to a black that I did get. Um, Bella was a brown dog. My um, Yubber Yubbers, his name was Alex. 
I want to show you guys a picture of my Alex because I that is the my dog. He is in heaven, honey. I'm going to see him when I get there, okay? Mm -hmm. He was a gorgeous um, Chesapeake Bay Retriever, and usually those are brown. I don't know if I've seen a black one or not. And they look like labs, but they're not labs. It's, he was a Chesapeake Bay and Retriever mixed with um, Bull Mastiff. So he was massive, and he was gorgeous. Oh, I've missed that baby. I miss him. Now we got Benson. Benson was not black because he's uh, um, one of our daughter's make-a-wish dog, and that's who they chose. It was between him and his sister. We did choose his sister originally because she was a cute. I think she was black. If I'm not mistaken, she was black. And then she had a, um, a problem, an issue. And we decided to get her brother instead. Well, the organization encouraged us to get, you know, the other one instead. That way we won't have any problems. And then my daughter wouldn't have to go through, you know, a loss or a trauma because of the issue. So we got her brother instead, which we now call Benson, who you hear pretty much in just about every of all my videos. He on the outside today, y'all. I put him out today. So, anywho. Just had to get that to put that little rant in there. So much for being a short, sweet video. Todd and Christmas were the best of pals. As the days inch closer to the 26th, George, the father, is stuck in a dilemma. Will Christmas get returned back to the shelter or will he get his forever home with the McCray family? And I'm not going to tell you. The next book was called The Ornament Keeper, and it is by Eva Marie Everson. Here it is right here. Cor uh, sorry, this cover is absolutely stunning, simple, and beautiful. This book was about, let me, yeah, I can go, I think I can go through this one without having to read the review of what I wrote. This one was about a woman who broke up with her husband. And no, I'm gonna read the I'm gonna read my review. <laughs> because I just went glance down at it and I'm like, oh yeah, I wrote that. It was real good too. The book is about when we as women put on ourselves responsibilities of assumptions. Leisha, who is the main character, assumed that her life had to come to a complete end because she became a pregnant teenager and became a wife because it was the right thing to do. Leisha fought many inner demons and one with hips and curve named Monica. <clears throat> Leisha has to figure, out, figure it out for herself that if living by her assumptions would be the end to her marriage. And... When she was figuring this out, she had, she, now see, this is a friend. I can't remember her friend's name, but she had a true friend. Her friend was like, girl, look, you, you acting up. You need to take a long, hard look at yourself. And no, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but you need to look at this deeper. Monica, <laughs> with the hits and the curves, is not your problem. You know, she called her to the carpet on it. Every female should have a BFF like that. Okay? Okay. And the last book that I read <laughs> is called Silent Days, Holy Night, and it is by Phyllis Clark Nichols. This book is about... Let me bring up my handy-dandy phone. <laughs> I really, really love this book. And I love that the main character, one of the main characters in this book is deaf. And I wrote, I love this book and how he gave the deaf culture an awesome main character. This book was about a young girl who saw through mean comments of a man that was considered a recluse. She learned a lot from this older man and he, her. She wanted to bring some joy in Christmas to him as a way to say thank you to him for all that he has done for her. 
It was a great book and how it made me rethink one of my bucket list items. I wrote that. Yes, I did. <laughs> I'm trying to get my little feet in the door on book reviews. And when I said that it uh, made me think rethink one of my bucket list items, since I was a young girl, I want to say about eight or nine. It had to be before my dad passed away. So he passed away when I was nine or eight going on nine. Yeah, eight going on nine. So it had to be since like I was seven years old. I, um, there was a deaf girl at our school in my class. She was only in our class brief, for a brief moment and she was um like a loner and that was because everybody was afraid that we will catch being deaf i ain't gonna say you know you know we were just dumb and then and then the teacher made you know didn't make it any better because she was just acting like crazy as the children were that we were gonna catch something but i don't know why i said we because I wasn't like that. I needed to get to know this, this young girl. And it was so funny because, you know, how, just like this young girl in here, I wanted to see what she was all about. You know, I went to her, but there I couldn't communicate with her. And I think this is communicate for, um, in sign language. I couldn't communicate with her. So she was trying to teach me something or say something to me. And I'm like, what? <laughs> So I wasn't getting it. And ever since then, I always wanted to learn American Sign Language. And I just never done it. And when I went to high school, they didn't offer it. So it wasn't an option then. But I never pushed it. And I wish I had. Because I believe I would have made... She would have been a phenomenal friend. And um, now, I, as of last week, I had my first class. And I am so excited. I'm looking forward to learning American Sign Language and being a positive influence in our community for anyone or if anyone I'm, I'm out and about and I notice someone who's, you know, having trouble communicating with the hearing, I'm hoping I'll be able to step in and to assist to make their day just that much brighter. So guys, that is all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, I've tried my best. When I stop rambling to make these things short and sweet. <laughs> so guys, before I let you go, I want you guys to be safe out there for your watch night service. Yes, we our church has two. I'm going to the one in noonday. <laughs> I'm going to let all the young folks go to the one later on at night. I, I don't got time to deal with all that follow rod and all that kind of mess. And some people get out there get to shoot. You know, how, what happened to fireworks? <laughs> Let our fireworks. Some be shooting, you know, bullets go up. They show them gotta come down. You don't know where they're coming down to at in this dark. Mm -hmm. Y'all better get a life. Be safe. <laughs> be safe, people. Be safe. But guys, that's, again, that's all I have for you today. If you haven't, go ahead and like and share this video. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And of course, click that post notification bell so you'll be notified of my next upload. And if you haven't also already, go ahead and follow me over on IG, Quilt and Beauty and Books. Until the next video, guys, be blessed. Bye.